Seasonal forecasting is predicting the weather and climate from one month to several months, perhaps even a year ahead. And that's really the bit in between weather forecasting and long-term climate prediction. You, you may have heard that when a butterfly flaps its wings in Brazil, it can cause a hurricane halfway across the world. Um, that, that idea is actually true, and there is sensitivity to small changes in the atmosphere that can grow into big things. And so to take that into account, we produce many, many forecasts on these long time scales and look at their average behavior. In order to do that, you have to give the computer model with its laws of physics all of the information about what today's climate looks like, so the state of the atmosphere, the state of the ocean, and then the laws of physics propagate that forward, take it forward in time and make a forecast out to these long ranges. But in order to get predictability at very long ranges like that, you have to include additional things beyond what you would normally put in a weather forecast. So it's not sufficient to just include the atmosphere, you also need to include things like the ocean and the role of the land surface, increasing greenhouse gases, all of the things that are normally associated with climate prediction. Another thing that we do is we send all our forecasts to a kind of international um, database, if you like, where everybody else sends their seasonal forecasts and so it's then possible to view everybody's forecasts together to make a more robust and informed judgment having seen everybody's forecasts and that's done every month and is supplied to national meteorological services all over the world. There's always been a great demand for information on this time scale. Beyond the weather forecasting time scale but nearer term than say the century predictions that climate change is associated with there is a really important window in the middle where people are actually planning and making decisions. These are people in government or individual users, right down to agricultural users, for example. So for regions that are affected by climate extremes, things like flooding or heat waves, then this timescale is really important. There are a range of ways that we issue forecasts. Uh, some of those are done locally, for example on Met Office website. Um, some of them are done directly to users and we send them a message when the forecast is prepared. Uh, other ways are through international structures like the World Meteorological Organization. What it is useful for is predicting the risk of um, hazards, things like the intensity of the hurricane season in the Atlantic several months ahead. We can do that with reasonable accuracy and that's of great interest to businesses, for example, in the reinsurance sector where they have to underpin insurance written uh, that might be affected by Atlantic hurricanes. And so by providing forecasts of the numbers of hurricanes months ahead, we can help them and that's of course of great use to their industry.